This is a video about the Timbales. I'm Kalani, this is World Drum Club, and I'm gonna do an, an overview for those of you who are, you know, maybe new to the Timbales or you have some Timbales and you wanna set them up a little bit better. I'm gonna be giving you basic setup in this video, also some tips uh, from, you know, just a working musician about how to make life easier and um, how to get a better sound, what kind of sticks to use, how to do some licks, some fills, what to do, what not to do, all that stuff in this video. Welcome to World Drum Club. So I'm going to go to the overhead view, and we're going to talk about the setup, how you basically arrange the timbales when you set them up. So hang with me a second. I have to push a button, and I'll be right back. That wasn't long. All right. So this is a typical set of timbales. There's a 13-inch drum over here, 14-inch over here. This is the high drum. We set the high drum up on the right, usually on the player's right. Why? Because unlike a drum set where you've got tom-toms, you're going from high to low, usually, the timbales are based on the kettle drums. And in the orchestra, if you think about the piano layout, right? High keys are over here, low keys are over here. On the kettle drums, the high drums are on the player's right. And as you move to the left, the drums get bigger and lower. So because the, the uh, timbales are basically coming from the timpani, that's what we do. We also use these sticks. These are timbale sticks. And you notice that they don't have what we call beads at the ends. They don't have that shaped tip. They're just straight pieces of wood. Early, of course, back in the day, or to play timpani, you would have a some sort of mallet, you know, a, a felt or wrapped uh, head on here, but the timbales are quite different. They've evolved. They're not the same as the timpani. So here's the high drum. Here's the low drum sound. And those of you who are astute observers might be asking, what is that? And that's a piece of black tape I put on here. I want to show you the difference. We'll get into tuning in a minute. Um, but I want to play you the difference between the tape and no tape. So here's the tape sound. It's kind of short, kind of dead. If I take this off, oh my God, that's Gorilla Tape. <laughs> if you want some tape that doesn't come off easy, get some Gorilla Tape. All right, now listen to it. Kind of a... Uh, ringy and you know i've got to say these are the heads that came on the drums not the greatest heads i would replace these with some maybe some coated heads these are just white uh white you know plastic uh i'm gonna go ahead and split this because i want a little bit of tape for the high drum but when you put the tape on it gets rid of the harmonics so listen carefully and hopefully you're listening to this on some good speakers or some headphones or something So you hear all that ring in there? Now put the tape just a little, just a little bit. Huge difference. You, you, you don't even really need much tape in a lot of cases, just a little bit. Let's say I want to cut down on that over ring there. Just a little bit there. Ooh. So much drier sound. And uh, the reason you might want to do that is, you know, the reason I did that is because I was recording. I just did a recording, and I can add reverb in the mix, but you can't take away the ring. So usually in the studio, we're going to have a, a little bit more dead sound, so we can control it. We can add to the sounds later. So here's what they sound out, sound like now. Now on the high drum, there's a couple different sounds you're gonna make. One is the regular head sound. And the most popular sound, or what you hear a lot of, is called a rim shot, right? Rim shot is when you hit the rim, you hit the rim, the edge, and the head at the same time. So your stick is very flat. If I go to the third view, hang on a second. Let's go to the third camera. So instead of here, right, where there's a little gap here, I'm going to put this all the way down, and it's hitting right on that edge. 
I can also move a little closer to the edge of the drum. So as I move in and out on the drum head, I have to reach over with my timbali stick because I'm so far from my camera switcher. As I move in and out, you'll notice the, the change. So we have a lot of a lot of variety on the high drum. Low drum, we're not doing as much of that, but you you could. So that's kind of the overview of what we do on the drums. Now let's go to the bells. Typically, on timbales, you you could have one bell. Typically, you see two a lot of the time. The small bell over here, notice there's also tape on these to reduce ringing. Small bell is called the cha-cha bell. The cha-cha bell is used primarily in guess what type? Guess what style? Yes, the cha-cha. You guys are geniuses. Large bell, and this would be considered a, yeah, pretty large, you know, medium large. Mambo bell. The mambo is... A it's a style. It's also part of a song, a, a salsa tune. The mambo section is often like a solo section, a repeated section, or the chorus, the coro. And um, we would go to the bell, uh, a larger bell, on that. So, you know, you have different options. Uh, but usually when things get heated up and, you're, you know, the band is going and everything's kind of loud, louder, you'd go to the bell. What do you do when you're not playing the bells? Well, let me play the bells for you, just so you can get a chance to hear them. So this is the cha-cha, the cha-cha sound. Now you could play on the top like this, and typically you're either playing on the top, or you can play on the mouth on the edge. I'm getting a lot of sympathetic vibration here. And then on the mambo bell, you're going to play on the top and the the mouth. Okay, so there's two basic areas you're playing on those. And you can play them both together. Okay, something like that. Now, another area that we play the timbales that's very common, especially at the beginning of a tune, because obviously we're not playing a lot of uh, rim shots and bells all the time. What we do for time, basically timekeeping, is we play the, the shell, or the cascara, meaning shell. So we might play something like this. Let me go to the other camera to show you real quick. Cascara, right here on the shell. You could play with the, you could play with the tip of the stick, or it's a little bit different sound. You got the tip, or the side of the stick. Now notice I'm. Pressing a little. It's not like I'm not really bouncing off. It's kind of a press stroke. If I bounce off, it sounds like this. And pressing. So we can change. Let me go back to the front. We can change the sound by how we strike the instrument. And that goes for the drum heads, the bells, the cascara, the shell. Uh, we're, we're changing our technique a little with the sticks and we can you know, have more, uh, a, a more muted stroke, closed 
or shorter sound. We can have it more open. So we're doing a lot. When we play the timbales, is, you know, we're not just standing back here uh, hitting stuff. <laughs> we're, we're trying to shape the music, trying to follow the music. And if you look at the video, I just did this recording of This Christmas, right? I mentioned that earlier. If you watch the video now after you've seen this video, you watch that video, and you'll see me do all these things. You'll see me play the cascara. I go to the, the cha-cha bell in the pre-chorus. I go to the mambo bell in the chorus. And then I'm playing the heads and things for solos and fills. Now, I've got two cymbals here. You can see that, obviously. Let me go back to the overhead view, and I'll talk about that. So typically, with the timbales, you're going to have a splash or crash cymbal. This cymbal over here is a Paiste 12-inch splash. Sounds like this. It's a bright sound. This is the signature. These are both signature symbols or signature series. This one is a 14-inch, and it's called a full crash. So here's the splash. Here's the crash. So, you know, very similar sounds. What's the difference between a splash and a crash? Just size and duration, pitch a little bit. But, you you know, they're really in the same spectrum. Both of these are bright, high-pitched cymbals. Relatively small. Uh, if they were on a drum set, they would look a lot smaller. Now, something you can do also on the cymbals, though, is, and I do, I'll do this, is you can play them on the tops, or what we call the bow of the cymbal. This top part is the bow, and then this is the bell. I know it's barely in the camera. Over here is the bell. But you play up there. You can do effects on your cymbals. So I can almost use this as a ride cymbal. So we can do, uh, yeah, effects and gentle things on the cymbals. We, we don't always have to play them bombastically, although sometimes, or a lot of the time, we are playing uh, the timbales and then accenting the hits with the cymbal. All right. So you need, you know, one cymbal's fine. You could have two if you want. You could have different kinds of symbols. A china symbol is, is nice. You could have even a ride symbol. Let's say you're the only one accompanying um, the, you're just sort of taking on the drum set role in the band, and you could have more of a, of, a, of a heavy crash or a light ride, and that way you've got options there. Have a crash, have a splash, have a china symbol, have some other sounds. You know, you can add things to the timbali setup, certainly. But basically, if you're the tim timbalero or timbali player, you're going to be playing fairly loud instruments. Um, it's a, it gets a little tricky to mic the timbales when you add softer instruments like wind chimes. You could do that, but then now you've got a miking issue because usually everything coming out of the timbali area you know, is going to be fairly loud. So if you do decide to add something like wind chimes or whatever, mark tree, bell tree, uh, then you want to put them off to the side and make sure that those have their own mic and that that mic is not going to be picking up a lot of the timbali sound. It's just a matter of balancing things out. Now, sometimes you... Um, now, let's talk about miking for a second because as the, as the drummer, as the timbalero or timbali player, you may not be the one in charge of miking the timbales. And a lot of people are not familiar with how to mic percussion because they don't do it a lot. Now, I've seen uh, engineers, so you have a sound engineer, they're going to be setting up mics. A really common, simple way to mic timbales is to put one mic overhead. Now, you can do that just to capture all the sound. That's what I'm doing right now. I've got one mic up here, mostly just for convenience. Uh, it, if I was doing a serious studio recording, I would want to have a couple other mics. But that's the number one just simple way to do it. You could do a stereo pair overhead, like a overhead of a drum set, that's going to pick up more of the highs, the cymbals, the bells. 
cascara, the, the high pitched sounds. It's not going to do justice so much to the drum heads themselves. Ideally, I think you'd want to have an overhead for the high sounds, and then you want to have a mic on each one of the drums. And you could put a mic like this, like an SM57, any kind of tom-tom or drum mic right on the drums, just like you'd mic a tom-tom or a snare drum. So just off the head, pointing down towards the drum. In some cases, it may work to mic the drums from underneath. Some engineers will want to stick mics up under the drum shells. I don't recommend that. It's not my favorite way to do it. However, you know, if somebody's having success miking the drums that way, you could mic them that way too. I don't like usually, you know, putting, I don't like drums mic'd from the bottom. I think a lot of people think that the sound just comes out of the bottom, uh, which it does a little, but that's not how we hear it. We are not underneath our drums listening to the drums. So if you want to have the sound that you're hearing, then you want to mic them from the top um, or just off, you know, to the, to the side a little bit. I wouldn't, I, and I think when you put mics underneath drums and you end up, you can end up with phasing problems uh, because you've got a mic overhead and a mic under, and now you've got sound waves traveling in opposite directions, going into microphones at different times. It just can create problems. So one of the things you could do when you put mics on your drums is actually do a roll off on the high end. Just use some mics on the, on the overhead for the high sounds, roll off the low end, and then for your drum mics, keep the keep the mids and lows and roll off the high end. And that way your mics are capturing two different frequencies of sound, two different spectrums, and you can mix that together and get a good composite sound and not have issues with phasing or lazing or you know sounds that are trying to compete with one another coming in two different microphones at different times. All right, so now we've covered Basically, the setup, the sticks, the cowbells, the shells, the heads, putting tape on to mute it. We've covered the cymbals. And I want to give you a couple other tips just on setup. And I want to talk about my setup here in particular and how you can set it up and, and get everything set up so it's not becoming loose because that's an issue. So let's go back to the overhead. All right. So let's talk about attaching your bells to your post. This is the accessory post. And um, I'll pop this off for a second. I'm going to show you what I do to, um, I think I'm going to pop it off. Let me see. All right. Maybe I'm not. I found the problem. Um, so this this was binding with this. All right. So when you are putting together your timbales, you're going to put um, each drum. Now, each drum shares the center post. So you can put each drum on one at a time. Usually, I do the low one first and then the high one. And then you've got this post. Now, these have different systems, but they're all basically the, they're working the same way. You've got this uh, slide here so you can move your bells forwards and backwards or uh, tw away from you and towards you this one has um, these little slots so it will grip in there and stay in one of them but when you put this on here's a little tip um, you can just put put the put the unit basically on and then i'll show you how to tighten it down And like I said, the Timbali manufacturers have been working on different... There's been diff so many different systems for uh, these center posts. I think I need two hands on this. Um, there's so many different systems, and, you, and you'll just see uh, all kinds of different... All kinds of different ones. Please go on. I don't want to have to stop the video <laughs> and restart it. All right, there we go. So a little tip for you to get these things tight is put your get a, a closed ended crescent wrench. Well you can use you could use either one. You can use your regular wrench. And put it like this. Can you guys see that? So I've got 
my wing nut here and I'm putting this on and then I can use this and I can turn it like that. It's just a little tip for you. Because if you try to tighten it with your hand, you're only going to get it so tight before you start hurting yourself. So just put your wrench like that and turn it. Uh, makes it way easier. Same with this. So you get this, you know, basically where you want it. I hope you guys can hear me. So I'm trying to talk into this mic because I have I can't use my shotgun for this video. So I'm using this mic and hopefully I'm. you can hear me. Uh, see that? right there. You can also use the same thing, the same technique for your cowbells. However, I want you to see what I did here. I modified these. And what I did is I just put on a regular nut, right? I went to the hardware store. I found the right size, you know, the regular nut, and it uses the same size nut, you know, it's a half inch, basically 13 millimeter half inch nut and I put a lock washer on there I put a regular washer and a lock washer now, why did I do that because these bells are notorious for just getting loose they they tend to loosen up over time and it just drives you crazy you know you're always tightening your bells and things so what I did is I just finally said okay enough's enough I'm gonna go to the hardware store and I got a lock washer regular washer and a nut and I gotta tell you these do not get loose. They don't. I took these on the road. I mean, you can see these are kind of old. It's kind of old gear. You crank this down a little. Don't go crazy. But, you know, it's got a lock washer, so you can feel it. It, You tighten it up, and it is not moving. So I like this. It also takes up less space. There's not a big wash, um, you know, a, a wing nut here. So there you go. You're welcome. Um, that's it. You've got your bells tightened down. You've got your center post tightened down. So that's pretty much what I have for you guys in this video. Um, you can experiment with putting tape on your shells if they're super ringy. Uh, like I said, you, there's there's tape for the drum heads. There's also other systems for the drum heads, like little rings of mylar and things. Uh, I would just get some coated white drum heads, you know, maybe a little thicker. Don't go crazy with the thickness. The timbales, uh, you know, you, if you go too thick with the head, then you're not going to get the brightness and crisp, crispness <laughs> out of it. Um, and uh, so you want to go with basically, you know, pretty thin heads and you tune them how you like. Usually we tune them to about a fourth, an interval. And... Um, you know, that's a personal preference thing, but, you know, the best way to figure out how to tune an instrument, and I get a lot of questions from people, how should I tune the bongos, how should I tune timbales? Listen to some salsa, you know, listen to Tito Puente, listen to Sheila E., listen to any popular salsa band, any of the established salsa bands, and just hear the timbales on there, and then find a sound you like and emulate that, you know. It's basically just crank the high one up so it's pretty tight uh, and then match the low one a little bit lower just so they sound like they're a pair. You know, it's not it's not rocket science, but uh, that's what I would do. Uh, anything else? Uh, you can use light stands for your cymbals. You don't need heavy stands. I would also normally probably use one stand and I just couldn't find a clamp right now because um, my stuff's all over and it's raining. Uh, but, you know, you could use one stand and, and have a boom, like booms coming out, just so you have one base. You know, you don't want a whole bunch of stands that you have to move and carry and buy. So you use one stand with a, with a Y, you know, with uh, the boom arms coming off of it for your cymbals. You can add some wood blocks, or usually we're using plastic blocks on timbales because you're going to beat them up, and if you use wood, you're probably going to destroy it after a while. But... Um, that's basically it, you guys. You can have uh, smaller sets like timbalitos, like a 10 and a 12. I do have a set where I have 10, 12, uh, 13, 14, and that's pretty cool. Have four timbales. You look at Tito Puente. I think he has some videos where he's playing like six timbales. <laughs> he's playing like huge ones and regular size and then the small ones. Um, so thanks for stopping by and watching this video. If you have any questions for me, you can contact me at patreon.com slash Kalani or KalaniMusic.com. 
But uh, go watch the video this Christmas and support the channel through patreon.com slash Kalani and um, leave your kind and helpful comments below. Uh, I don't always answer the, co- the questions in the comments. Comments are mainly for you guys. So just be nice to each other and be helpful. We appreciate that. And um, like I said, if you want to get in touch with me directly, do that through the patreon.com slash Kalani uh, page over there. All right. Thanks and enjoy playing your timbales. I'm Kalani Das. This is World Drum Club. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon.